In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Cindy asks us, this is kind of ew, but I read that eating your own boogers helps boost your immune system. Is this true? So, does physically taking boogers out of your nose, putting them in your mouth and swallowing them boost your immune system? The short answer is probably not. You are ingesting your snot all the time without needing to channel it through your mouth. So if there is a benefit here, you are absolutely getting it without needing to munch on those nose nuggets. That said, there are a couple of medical professionals who are willing to comment on the benefits of mining for green candy, particularly touting benefits to one's immune system. One of the more credible sounding proponents of the habit is Scott Knapper, a professor of biochemistry who made waves around the world's media outlets in 2013 when he half-heartedly proposed to a group of his students that eating one's boogers allows our bodies to safely develop anti bodies to the weakened pathogens that present in our snot and noses. He also suggested that the reason boogers have a sugary taste is to entice children to eat them, thus helping to boost their immune systems. It's evolution and you can't fight it. While he was mostly just trying to get his students interested in doing science by an unconventional proposition, Napa's hypothesis, thanks largely to the media, has since morphed into many seeming to think that he actually did some sort of study on this and that there is evidence to support it. The truth is that to date, no such study has been done, though Napa has expressed interest in doing one and no doubt would win an Ig Nobel Prize for his work if he ever does it. Of course, as you might expect, finding a large sample size of volunteers is going to be something of a hurdle. Now, another name that comes up whenever the subject of eating boogers is mentioned is lung specialist Dr. Friedrich Bissinger. In 2004, he reasoned that eating boogers is healthy for a similar reason that Napa did. The Museum of Hoaxes did a little background check on the good doctor and noted that Dr. Friedrich Bershinger has never published a medical study on the subject, and his original quote about the benefits of eating boogers comes from a poorly translated interview with a German magazine. As far as we can tell, Bischinger has never really elaborated upon his original hypothesis. So, without any study to date on the subject, to answer the question at hand, we're going to need to analyze the plausibility of the hypothesis. Is he correct about the microbes and other things in your nasal mucus? And the answer is yes, that's one of the functions of it, to help filter out dust and pathogens. But there is a problem here. As pointed out by Dr. William Schaffner of Vanderbilt University, we humans ingest our nasal mucus all the time, day and night. The wet mucus in our noses generally gets shuffled back into our throats via cilia and sometimes via simple gravity when our heads are in the right position. So if you didn't know before watching this video, you do ingest boogers every day. You might have just swallowed some right now, if you think about it. Mm. Needless to say, few medical professionals give credence to Napa's or Bershner's hypothesis. In order for it to be true, there would have to be something special about the relatively dried mucus that you have to pick out over the wet mucus that you snort up and swallow. And, well, there's simply no reason to think that there would be any significant difference other than potentially moisture content. However, not all hope is lost for you bogey fans, though. As Dr. Joseph McCola notes, there's an increasingly popular hypothesis that our obsession with cleanliness as a society is causing more of certain types of diseases because our bodies aren't being exposed to certain pathogens regularly and thus our immune systems are weaker as a result. It's the so-called hygiene hypothesis. So it is plausible enough that ingesting mucus does indeed expose our bodies to pathogens it can handle and is helping the immune system in this way. But as mentioned before, this is happening anyway. There's no need to manually pull it out of your nose and put it in your mouth and less, of course, you like it. Either way, it's ending up in your stomach. That said, while it may seem gross to those of us who've never tried or don't remember it, because nearly all children do it at some point or another, according to the sparse few studies that have been conducted on booger eaters, the vast number of people who eat their nasal mucus find it palatable, which probably isn't a surprise, because otherwise they wouldn't do it. As Sidney Tarajau in a 1966 report on coprophagia, the compulsive eating of bodily secretions, noted, Persons do eat nasal debris and find it tasty too. So, to sum up, at least to date, there is no scientific proof that ingesting snot by passing it through your mouth is beneficial. That said, it is plausible that the snot we do ingest all the time is benefiting us in the way snot eating proponents suggest. It's just that we don't need to put it in our mouths to see the benefit if such a benefit as hypothesized does exist. In the end, though, as long as you're careful, picking and eating is not generally going to hurt you and only find it tasty. So, if that's your thing, well, bon appetit.
And now for some bonus facts. The correct term for eating one's own mucus is the decidedly less off-putting sounding term mucophagy. And according to the BBC, at least 10% of people who regularly pick their nose occasionally practice mucophagy. Further, about 90% of the adult human population in the same survey admitted to picking their nose, a figure that climbs to 99% in younger people. So the habit is oddly common considering the extreme taboo that surrounds it. And now for another bonus fact. As mentioned, for the most part, the act of picking one's nose is entirely harmless. And as long as you're careful or don't try to cram a fork up there or go knuckle deep or something, in the vast majority of cases, you're not going to do yourself any lasting harm. That said, picking one's nose is still listed as one of the leading possible causes of nosebleeds. For instance, in a 2001 study on compulsive nose picking, it was discovered that 25% of teenage subjects who mind their nose four times per day or more suffered from nosebleeds as a result of the activities. And now for another bonus fact. In a study published in 2006 on the link between picking and Staphylococcus aureus, a bacterium commonly linked with skin and sinus infections, they found that habitual nose pickers were about 20% more likely than non-habitual pickers to have the bacterium present in their nose, suggesting a causal link between the two. And now for another bonus fact. Because blowing out dried snot from your nose can sometimes require a great deal of pressure, which can cause damage to your nasal septum, it is generally recommended that you simply use a finger to gently remove the offending nose crusties instead. And in doing so, you will join 90% of adults who stood up and proudly proclaimed in the previously mentioned study that they are nose pickers. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. But if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out some of the other videos linked to on the screen. And as always, thank you for watching.